If you could convert one more online lead every year, what would that be worth to your business? What if you could convert three more or six more? I mean, that sounds like a good goal to aim for, right? Convert six more online leads in a year. That comes out to one every two months. What would that do for your GCI? I can practically hear you thinking, yep, that would be great, Matt, but online leads are like a puzzle with some of the pieces missing. Half the time, they don't respond to my calls or texts, and when they do, they say they already have an agent, or they just wanted to look at the pictures, or they pretend I contacted the wrong person. No! 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 I get it, you guys. I spent two years as my wife's marketing director, and I experienced all of that. If all of this is relatable to you, if you want to convert six more online leads every year, or even just one more, gather around. This is the first of a two-part series. You're going to learn the proven system for converting online leads from a pair of agents who are so good at it, they've earned Homelite Elite status and been named Best of Zillow. They have all the pieces, they've solved the puzzle, and they're going to show you how you can too. This is the walkthrough. Hey everyone, I'm Matt McGee, editor of Homelight's Agent Resource Center and your host every week right here on The Walkthrough. On this show, you'll learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created The Walkthrough. We're on a journey to find out how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. You can get in touch with me in two different ways. Uh, number one, you can leave a voicemail by calling 415-322-3328, or you can send an email to walkthrough at homelight.com. I do love hearing from you, and I do read and hear all the messages that come in. On today's show, we are talking about online leads, converting online leads. You're going to hear from two of the best, Jackie Soto and Elmer Morales. They are the principals at eHomes. That's a brokerage in the Ontario, California area. It's about an hour east of Los Angeles. Beautiful, beautiful area. Elmer has been licensed for 19 years and Jackie for 11. They formed the eHomes team back in 2014, and then eHomes became its own brokerage at the start of this year, which sounds like a topic that we'll have to talk about on a future episode. So when it comes to online leads, eHomes is different than a lot of agents, teams, and brokerages. In fact, if you listen to the previous two episodes of The Walkthrough, both Abby Walters and Rob Henderson mentioned that they tried Zillow and other online lead sources, but decided it wasn't for them. Jackie and Elmer are going in the other direction. They are growing their business with more online leads. They are Homelight Elite agents. That means they're among the top 1% of agents on our platform. They are best of Zillow. They also work online leads from Opendoor, uh, IDX on their website, Facebook ads, 55 Places, and several others. You want numbers? Well, in 2019, 38% of eHomes business came from online leads. This year, they expect about 60 to 65% of their business to come from online leads. So who better to invite onto the walkthrough to give a masterclass in converting online leads? In part one of this two-part conversation, listen for Jackie and Elmer to talk about their internal systems and processes. It's the structure that you have to have if you wanna convert more online leads. We purposely spend a lot of time on this piece of the puzzle, accountability, pipeline review, lead rotation, and more. It is that important. Also, listen for them to explain why they take a different approach to working with renters, why they don't ask buyers right away about getting pre-approved. And yes, they do walk us through their scripts and exactly what happens when a new online lead comes in. After the conversation, I'll share a little preview of part two and also an important note about our scheduling over the upcoming holidays. But without further ado, here is part one of my conversation with Homelight Elite agents, Jackie Soto and Elmer Morales. 
So you guys are best of Zillow. You are Homelight Elite. So obviously you're crushing it with your online leads. And this does not happen overnight, right? You don't just decide one day, wake up and say, hey, we're going to be great at converting online leads starting tomorrow. So tell me what you have done internally to make this possible, like where your culture is concerned. Elmer and I, when we were first discussing starting the brokerage eHomes, uh, we came together and I think it came down to us really deciding who we wanted to be. And that came down to our core values. So we knew that we wanted to provide structure. We wanted to provide accountability. And we wanted to be reliable partners to every online account that we had kind of collectively before we actually partnered. Uh, So making sure that we are aligned with the right agents and the right companies to be able to serve both and help both grow, I think was key for us. Setting that setting that in advance, the tone for core values, understanding the core values for your, our companies that we're partnered with too, to make sure that we're aligned and able to serve them at a high level and grow with them. Matt, it's like Jackie just touched on, accountability is going to be a huge deal. It's something that we push heavily. Uh, even when we're recruiting agents, we're letting them know that Unlike maybe other offices that they've been at, uh, accountability is going to be a huge part of the way they do business moving forward. Um, So I think that's the biggest influence on online leads um, is going to be uh, accountability. And obviously, to make this possible, you also have to have the structure of the brokerage in place. So what do you have in terms of structuring things with new agents to get them on board quickly? So we have a heavy um, onboarding process. When they come on board, they're made aware of basically every account that is available to them to grow into, or we have experienced agents that come onto the team and they're able to pretty much get on right away once they understand the systems and they understand the expectations um, ahead of time, right? Also, they have the opportunity when you're in a hybrid brokerage like eHomes to be able to grow their own business if they wanted uh, to do personal production. So personal production is huge for some of our agents, but they're able to supplement with this online business. I like to see us kind of as the brokerage for new agents that need to kind of gain those new connections and build trust. And then also for the agents that may be struggling right now. We all know real estate isn't linear. You know, you have ups, you have downs if you're not consistent with your business. So if you were looking for kind of those training wheels to get back up and running, we can supplement that for you. And also, Matt, to dig a little bit deeper into the training, it's before any of the agents take any sort of lead on, uh, we have to make sure that they're scripted, that they're using the scripts that we provide for them. And they're also um, you know, uh, using the CRM that we provide for them. So it's heavy training early on, like the first two to three weeks, to make sure that we're all on the same page and we're all like speaking the same language, in other words. So we have to make sure that their objection handling is up to par as well. And and when and when an, an agent comes on, whether they are a brand new agent or an experienced agent that's been somewhere else, obviously you are telling them from from day one, here are our expectations as far as calls that you're going to make, how you're going to handle, right? There's a whole system in place. From before day one, from day like negative 30, before they're even hired, like you're not going to be hired if this is not okay. Ultimately, you know, we want to be surrounded by greatness. We believe that who you surround yourself with is who you're going to become, right? So we don't want to bring on an agent that will likely fail with our systems and procedures here. Um, We have a proven system. We know it's successful. So this is basically how we do it. We're always looking to grow. um, But right now, this is how we do it. This is what is successful. So we set that ahead of time. When when, uh, someone comes in from maybe they've been at a different uh, agency before, What kind of reaction do you get when you start going over all this detail with them? Overwhelm. (laughs) Like that's the best, that's the best word is overwhelm. We literally had one agent um, recently, about a week and a half ago, Elmer was discussing procedures, practices that we have here, you know, going above and beyond for the client, meeting renters, you know, some people won't meet with online leads that are renters that we do that here. Um, so a lot of people, they get overwhelmed. Why do you, why do you meet with online renters? It's because they're eventually going to, they're going to become buyers. So we want to, our focus is providing great customer service, regardless of what it is that they may need. And that's our ultimate focus as a consumer. It's not necessarily what they're looking for. It's more their consumer experience. And then also to touch on that, a renter, here's the thing with the renter is we don't treat them as a renter. We treat, we treat them as a human being, right? A connection. People, we're staying online leads. 
But truthfully, it's a connection that you wouldn't otherwise have had with a human being that wants to pursue home ownership. Okay, so let's talk about this system. And we, we've sort of built this up already. Um, what all are you tracking? What goals do you give agents uh, for them to, you know, in terms of calls and appointments and all that sort of stuff? Uh, so there's two, right? There's one, there's a set of agents that are onboarding. And then you have this, the set of agents that are already onboarded and, and ramped up and running. So our expectations are, for example, uh, with one uh, partner, it's a 90, over a 90% um, appointment set. When you talk to a consumer on the phone, you have to have an over 70% actual uh, person show up for that appointment. And then from there, it's, 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 it's quite a bit of a drop off. You have to be over 30% when we're converting to actually showing homes. And then our goal is to ultimately get to anywhere from eight to ten percent to ten percent actual um, closing conversion rate. And then also we're tracking that. Um, we track a lot of personal development too, because we want to make sure that we're growing as a team, right? And we're able to find new ways to serve the consumer um, on a higher level. So we track personal development as well. What What are some of the personal development type things that you're looking at? A great, a great example. This week we're doing uh, time management. So we noticed that a few agents were overwhelmed with the amount of leads they were receiving and how many times they had to go out to show homes and whatnot. So we got into onto time management and we're definitely tracking their calendars at this point. And then also another example was going to be, oh, our book club. We do a book club that we make sure that we're developing our mindset in regards to connection with the consumer. Yeah, we 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 picked up. Uh... You know, like when we get agents that come in from other brokerages, Matt, it, for whatever reason, there might be a disconnect on, you know, time with Matt, like Matt Jackie just said, with maybe like time, time management. You can give somebody leads, but if they have, a, if they do a poor job of time management, mm -hmm. then it's going to lead to bad results. Mm -hmm. So we have to oversee their entire business and make sure we're plugging in pieces into um, their uh, the business as a whole. And we want to make sure that we're keeping their minds engaged and encouraged because, you know, in our business, it's easy to get discouraged, especially when you're working with online leads. You have, I assume you have someone in the, in the brokerage that is managing all this, like sort of tracking, you know, appointment rate, met rate, offers, the whole nine yards. Yeah, we have a whole staff actually in place. It's not just one person that's tracking. Elmer tracks it. I track it. We have um, a database manager who's tracking, heavily listening to all of the phone calls, making sure there's enthusiasm on the calls. And then one of our main resources for training, that's Frank, who is also heavily involved with tracking and holding the agents accountable. Now, you, And you're getting online leads from a number of sources, right? Like obviously there's HomeLite is one of them and Zillow and, you know, five or six or whatever number others. Is there specific training that Frank and you guys have to do just based on the processes? Like I, the HomeLite process... I would assume is different from the Zillow process, which is going to be different from a Facebook or an IDX lead. So the training has to be customized to some degree. It does. Um, and, and I think it comes down to script more than anything. Uh, but at the end of the day, we treat every single online lead just like we would, uh, you know, from from one partner to the from that gives us 100 leads a month to a partner that gives us two leads a month. We treat everybody the same. So a lead is a lead. We treat it exactly. We treat them all. We treat all leads the same. Uh, it's just the script sometimes might change depending on the type of lead that's coming in. But for the most part, our ultimate goal is to set up face-to-face -face appointment and get the consumer what they acquired on. Also, Matt, um, it's funny that you asked that because it kind of trickles down, right, from the account, um, basically the account that we have, which would be, for example, Zillow. Uh, right after this call, we have a call with our rep to be able to go over the weekly expectations and where we're at. And then that trickles down into the team. Any new trainings that we feel that we need um, in regards to each different account, we'll meet with them as a leadership team once a month. Uh, you guys do pipeline review on a regular basis? Pipeline review is something that gets addressed actually every week. So um, our Jackie spoke about our database manager. So our database manager's job is to sit there and listen to phone calls, great phone calls, and then sends them over to the to uh, Frank, who's our our production manager. He sits with the agent once a week for thirty to forty five minutes. They discuss all the new leads that the buyer that the agent has taken on. They discuss all their old leads, and then they discuss the new phone calls that were listened to. And he might address any issues that might have come up or also uh, any wins that might have come up during that phone call. 
And if in the course of reviewing that with all the agents, if somebody's you know not meeting their goals, what what do you do? What happens? Are there additional coaching, additional training? Do they ever get pulled off of the lead flow? Yeah, we we do have to remove them off the lead flow because sometimes they get overwhelmed or things come up. You know, things come up in life where you have to pull somebody off of lead rotation. So the pipeline review is really to tell us a story as a leadership team. So if we see that they're starting to fall behind, we might we might pause them early on. Um, or if we just get to the pipeline review and we notice that everything's gone to matter and they're really far behind on catching up to tasks the reminders do, then we'll pull them off a lead rotation. Uh, because we have to answer to the Zillows of the world, the home, light, uh, home lights of the world, the open doors of the world. So, you know, they're not really looking to hear, hear any sort of excuse. So we have to do a good job of management and make sure that we're addressing that quickly. And at this point, I'd say that these bigger companies, they're shifting. It's no longer you're purchasing for leads. These companies are looking to partner with great agents. So it's really come down to who's servicing at a high level. So it's super important to hold the agents accountable to that. Who's converting at a high level? Yeah, it's a referral base. <laughs> Everything's turning to referral base. You're not just paying for a lead that you're going to throw away. Hi, everyone. If you're enjoying the walkthrough, we'd appreciate it if you tell the real estate agents in your network about us. Even more, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Your feedback helps us get better and in some cases can also help new listeners find and hear us. And when we get around to having you on the show, the more listeners, the better, right? I know you want to hear about scripts and what eHomes does as soon as a new online lead comes in, and we will get to all that in just a moment. But first, let me recap what we've covered so far, because seriously, you guys, nothing else you're going to hear this week or in the next episode will work unless you have that foundation in place. That's what it takes to convert online leads at a high level. So, so far, We've heard Jackie and Elmer tell us that they have a detailed onboarding process. It covers expectations, accountability, scripts, the CRM they use, and so forth. And that runs for about three weeks. Elmer explained that with at least one of their lead partners, agents are expected to have a 90% conversion rate on setting an appointment, a 70% rate for the meeting actually happening, a 30% rate for showing homes, and ultimately, they want to close about 8 to 10% of their online leads. That's way above industry averages. The number I hear most agents use for online leads is, you know, a 2 to 3% average conversion rate. So eHomes is trying to do about triple that. They have multiple people tracking agent productivity, listening to calls, reviewing pipelines every week, and holding agents accountable. And agents who don't meet expectations will get taken off lead rotation. It's very structured and organized. Again, it needs to be if you want to crush online lead conversion. Now, we're about to get into what happens when an online lead comes in. And this is really timely because online real estate activity is way up since the pandemic started. I mentioned to Jackie and Elmer that IDX traffic on my wife's website was about 400% higher in May of this year than February. And She's had more IDX leads in the past two to three months than all of 2019. They said they're seeing the same thing, a significant increase in online leads since the pandemic began. So with that in mind, back to the conversation we go. Here's how eHomes handles an online lead. We talked about culture and structure and accountability. Let's dive in to what happens when an online lead comes in, like, What's that process? Okay, so there's a lot of automation that takes place. Um, So immediately, as soon as a lead comes in, there's two options of where that lead can go in, depending on the lead source. So it's either going to go directly to an agent for the agent to to answer, and that's done in a round robin. So there's five agents that are whose phone's going to ring. First one to answer the phone is the one that's going to take the call. The uh, second option, it either it might go to the ISA department. Either way, it gets treated the same. so obviously their job is to try to set an appointment as quickly as possible and as, and as early as possible. And on the automation side, you have text messages that immediately go out. 
So as soon as the lead comes in, there's an, there's an automated text that, text that goes out and it reads something like, thank you for contacting Alan Morales and the eHomes team. Um, we, we appreciate your business. Someone will be in contact with you shortly. So it's just kind of a quick intro. We paste the photo of, for like home light, we'll paste the photo of the home light profile. Um, so it kind of builds some rapport and, and, and um, just gives them something I expect. And then we have an email that will eat immediately go out as well, similar to the text message, just saying, hey, thank you for reaching out to Alan Morales again. And, and um, just so, you know, that we're covering all three uh, types of communication, email, text, and phone call. Go, it's, it's a mix of automation and the human touch taking that phone call in. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the phone call is going to be the most effective, but then the ultimate goal is to get face-to-face. So everything that we're doing at the end of the day is to get us face to face. And that's where we're going to be most most effective as salespeople. I was just going to say, you'd be surprised how many consumers inquire and forget where they inquire. So that's like a huge key we was saying at the end where he says um, he sends a photo regarding uh, what platform they inquired on, whether it's Zillow or Homeland, he'll send that type of message, very specific. And, and Matt, I was going to tell you that it, it creates credibility too when you, when you send them a photo of you know, the, maybe the site that they inquired from, it creates credibility because if it's a site where they get sent to multiple agents, then you want it or, or, you know, they're being sent to just different types of, not just agents, but I don't know, they're getting spam mail from all over the place, right? You have to create some sort of credibility when they're, when you're reaching out to them. The point is, like they inquired through Homelight or they inquired through Zillow. So a lot of times the consumer is expecting Zillow or Homelight or these bigger companies to call them. They're not expecting Matt or Elmer from eHomes. Elmer, I think you said the goal with this first call is to get the appointment. That's really what you're focused on. Yes, that, that's the ultimate goal. Um, we're not like digging too deep into the conversation. Are they, are they pre-approved? Uh, do they have a house to sell? Like we... We care about all that stuff, but we don't want to find those things out until we're face to face with them. You don't want to have any hard, you don't want to have any difficult conversations with the consumer until you're face to face, because that's when we're most effective. So over the phone, what you want to do is you want to set an appointment by delivering what they want. So if if a consumer inquires about a property, then you want to make an appointment quick, as quickly as possible and as soon as possible to get them into the home. If they're if they're not pre-approved, so be it. But let's go find those things out when we get face to face. There's a process in building trust, and that's what our process is really. Is you want to get face to face, you don't ask those hard questions up front. You want to build the trust and get there to build the relationship because ultimately we're in the relationship. And and then too, Matt, I also always get the question from agents when I go out to talk on panels, and they ask, "Well, Elmer, what are you doing if you're heading out?" to me, buyers who aren't pre-approved. And I always, well, you know, if you sit there and you try to pre-approve a buyer over the phone, you might as well hang up that phone. No one wants to talk about financing over the phone. Those are personal things that you discuss with someone face-to-face. So if you're sitting there trying to scrub a lead and and find out what their finances are like, again, you might as well hang up the phone. Get face-to-face, have those conversations in person. Again, that's where agents shine face-to-face. I almost feel like you have to earn the trust to ask those questions. Yeah. If you didn't earn the right to ask those questions, you shouldn't be asking them up front. Yeah, and that's uh, it's interesting the way you do that because that sort of goes against a lot of what I'm seeing and I'm sure what you guys are seeing just within the last couple months because of the pandemic and there's a lot more reluctance to have more face-to-face meetings because of health and safety and so I know there's there's been this sort of movement to you know, hey, don't dare meet with somebody unless you know they're pre-approved, unless you know they're a serious buyer. But you guys are saying the opposite, that it's still, let's just get face-to-face. We have a better chance with converting them once we can get face-to-face. It doesn't even come down to us wanting to make money during COVID. During COVID, we had people that needed to move. So when people need to move, we're here to help them. You know, we have these relationships built already with Zillow and Homelight, and they're running into these consumers that need to move. They're connecting with them. It's our responsibility and our duty to serve, number one, the accounts that we have. So we're going to serve our partners, but we're also going to serve that consumer as safely as possible. We're going to get out there. There's proper guidelines, and we followed every guideline to be able to get things done. When when they, when they you make that 
that first connection on the phone, uh, the automated text and emails go out, you get the, the the person on the phone. How soon do you want to have that appointment? Is it a ma- is it an urgent thing? Is there a problem if the if it doesn't happen like for a week? What's the goal there? So we have an acronym SAT. So it's set appointment today. So the sooner you set the appointment, the more likely you're gonna the more likely it is that you're gonna be able to convert it. And the reason for that is because as you already know, Matt, buying and selling a home is emotional. Like it's super emotional. The further you push out the appointment, the more likely it is that the emotions will drop and the less likely it is that they'll show up to the actual appointment. So uh, shoot for sooner than later. So there's 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 the, these phrases with with online leads, speed to lead, and you guys are also then speed to appointment. Speed to Again, speed to appointment is going to be crucial. And the consumer is always going to push things off to... Um, you know, whatever is convenient for them. But if you don't ask them to move the appointment to sooner or you don't educate them with the way the market is right now, where homes are selling uh, within a day or two, you have to educate them and let them know, hey, look, this might be gone by next Saturday. Why don't we set that appointment for today after six o'clock? Because I know you get off at five. And if you can't make it, you just let me know and we'll, put, and we'll try to do it again tomorrow. How's that sound? And it usually works out. I was I was just going to ask you, like, what does a script sound like on that first call? But it sounds you're kind of giving it right there. You're 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 just you're wanting to get that first appointment right away. And I love the SAT acronym too. Yeah, so we we use the ALM uh, acronym as well, which is appointment, location, motivation. So in every every phone call that we have, and we when we train the agents on this, that's exactly what we're going through. It's appointment first. That's how we open. Jackie actually said she wanted to volunteer to role play a little bit. So, <laughs> so it, it, it's really simple, uh, Matt. So let's say, Matt, you you uh, inquired about one, two, three, banana street. So on our on the, the opening line goes exactly like this. Hey, Matt, this is Elmer with the eHomes team. You inquired on one, two, three, banana street. How soon did you want to see it? So you're asking right right away. You're saying let's let's go do it. Oh yeah, immediately because that's what the consumer called on. They didn't call, they didn't call to talk about financing or anything. They want to talk about when I can go see the house. So it's appointment, then it's location. So Matt, what has you moving? What what is it about uh, one two three Banana Street that has you moving to this neighborhood? You'll share that. I'll gather that information, and then Matt, the next question is we're shooting now for motivation, right? And then Matt, so what has you moving? Two one two three Banana Street, and then you'll give me motivation, and then that's it. That's it. We're not trying to collect any more information. We cut it off right there, and we're off to to the appointment um, to build rapport, establish relationship. So there you go. We squeezed in the buyer script right at the end. There, you heard Elmer explain the ALM approach: appointment, location, and motivation. An online lead comes in and they ask three questions. How soon do you want to see the home? That's the appointment part. Why are you looking in this neighborhood? That's the location part. And what has you moving to this area? That's the motivation part. So let's consider that our number one takeaway, the ALM script for talking to online buyer leads. Here are a few other takeaways that grabbed my attention. Jackie and Elmer have a proven system that's very, very heavy on processes and expectations. They have accountability built in at every step. Things like listening to agent phone calls and doing regular pipeline reviews. You have to have all that if you want to convert online leads at a high level. Another takeaway is that the goal with every new lead is to get face-to-face with the person as soon as possible. They use the acronym S-A-T, set appointment today. They expect agents to set appointments with 90% of incoming leads, and the sooner you have that appointment, the better your chance of converting the lead. You've heard the phrase speed to lead, right? It's pretty common. Well, for eHomes, it's about speed to appointment. And then finally, I thought this was really interesting. They don't talk about financing and pre-approval until that first meeting. I know that goes against how a lot of agents are doing things right now, especially during the pandemic, but it is working for Jackie Elmer and eHomes. They said they don't hit the lead with those financing questions on the first call. They wait until the face-to-face meeting. So 
Coming up in part two, we're going to continue with Jackie and Elmer. We're going to talk about nurturing online leads because, you know, not every lead you get is ready to buy or sell right now. So here's a preview of that conversation. It's a proven fact that most consumers use the first agent that they meet. So if we want to go off of statistics, then we want to take our chances and meet with the consumer no matter how far out. And you also have to have confidence in your nurture process that you're going to do, you know, make all the right phone calls. You're going to send all the, the right amount of text messages to stay in front of the consumer. So when they do decide to make the move, that you're the first person that they're going to be calling. So that's coming up in part two. And an important programming note, we're going to step away for one week. We know a lot of you are taking time off before and or after the July 4th holiday. Some of our home light team is doing the same. So there will be no walkthrough on Monday, July 6th. Instead, part two of this conversation will come out the following week, Monday, July 13th. You know, the walkthrough is appointment listening for my wife. So honey, no show on the 6th. Next one is the 13th. Everyone else, if this is appointment listening for you, and I sure hope it is, please mark your calendars accordingly. Again, no show next week. We're back on Monday, July 13th. Okay, if you have questions for Jackie or Elmer, questions or feedback for me or Homelight, you can leave me a voicemail anytime. The number is 415-322-3328 or send an email. It's walkthrough at homelight.com. That's all for this week. Thanks so much to Jackie Soto and Elmer Morales for joining us, and thank you for listening. My name's Matt McGee. Remember, at Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. That's why we created The Walkthrough. We're on a journey to find out how great real estate agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Go out and safely sell some homes. We'll talk to you again in two weeks with part two on converting online leads. Bye-bye.